Hello everyone. So today we're going to be taking a look at this 2016 Hyundai Tucson. So thanks to McGinley Motors, Mazda, Land Rover, Peugeot and Volvo for allowing me to come down here and review this car for you guys today. For all contact information regards this dealership, please see the description box below. So in today's review, we're going to be taking a look at the interior of the car, I'll explain all the features work, we'll just start up, look at the engine, go over the performance data, take a look around the exterior and take the car on a detailed test drive. So traditional handy style key fob. So we're just going to lock the car, start it up, and then we'll start our review around the exterior. Okay, so this car is 7,686 kilometers on the clock so far. So we'll just apply the clutch and turn the key to start. Just turn off the climb control. So we'll power on the bike xenon projector headlamps so along with the front and rear fog lights and the hazards. And only the driver's side window is fully automatic. Okay, so the Hyundai Tucson. Well, this car is actually a very interesting vehicle to us here in Ireland because apparently the Hyundai Tucson is the best selling car in Ireland at the moment. Uh, they sold over 3,300 units this year so far. And there's also five trim levels, so it comes with the, the Comfort, uh, that's the base model. Then you have the Comfort Plus, then there's the Executive, the Premium, and the Premium Plus. So this one here is the mid-range Executive. And as I said, it's got the bike xenon projector headlamps, and you've got your LED running daylights located just below the fog lights there. So from the outside, this is actually a very nice looking car. I do like the styling, I like the overall design of the headlights. Good profile, pretty good in size, and it's got very nice lines going down the side of the vehicle. And you also got the LED turn signals on the exterior mirrors. It also comes with these very nice looking 17 inch Spitfire spoke alloy wheels with ventilated steel disc brakes in the front with saw discs in the rear. It also has the McPherson strut front suspension with a multi link setup in the rear. And as you can see, this car also has the shark fin antenna as well as aluminium roof rails and it looks quite good from the rear as well very nicely designed taillights and it also has rear parking sensors as well as a reversing camera one thing I forgot to mention at the start of the video is the car's exterior color it's called polar white quite a few colors to choose from in the Tucson range so the boot space itself is pretty big in size, measures down to 514 litres and this particular one has been fitted with the optional uh, rubber or I think it's more of a plastic uh, floor mat just to um, protect the carpet. And you also got a 12 volt park LED located off to the side there. And you also have this removable cargo cover and as you can see you can remove it completely as I said or you can uh, clip it into these points here if you just want to move it further up the uh, boot of the car. And also if I just come around to the back seat, we'll just uh, fold down the rear seats here. Uh, I actually have to use two hands for this, so bear with me just a second. Uh, there's just a handle down here at the side of the seat, pull that, and then the seat slides forward. Okay, so that is the, uh, it's a split 60-40 folding rear seat, and as you can see I fold it down the larger half there to 60. And if I actually just move this out of the way a bit, you can clearly see that it goes down completely flat, so there's no inconvenient lips or ledges left behind. So this car certainly has quite a lot of boot space. So if we just put this rear seat back up, it actually goes into a default position. So what you have to do is pull the handle again and push it back. Alright, so uh, space in the back of the Tucson. Well, I have the driver's seat in my position and as you can see, I have got a load of legroom back here. I hope you guys can see that properly on camera, but there is tons of space back here. So legroom is excellent and headroom is very good as well. I got plenty of it. I'm about five foot eight myself, but anybody about six feet tall could sit back here. No problem whatsoever. You also got this center mounted armrest with two integrated cup holders, full black leather interior, and the seats are also perforated. You also got map pockets in the back of each front seat as well as rear ventilation. So this is a very, very spacious and roomy car for sure. Definitely an ideal family wagon. 
So I really do like this car from the outside. I actually really do like the styling. I think it's quite a good looking car. Of course, let's not forget this is basically the twin of the Kia Sportage because Hyundai and Kia are basically the same company these days. Uh, it's got the same 1.7 diesel engine, same basic architecture as the Sportage. But I think it's just that little bit better looking. And this one's also been fitted with the optional uh, wind deflectors as well. So let's get back in. And as I said, only the driver's side window is fully automatic. It's just written there on the switch. And we'll turn off the fog lights, put the headlights back in automatic and off with the hazards. Okay, so the interior of the Tucson, well off to the right here, the only controls you have are, you know, for the brightness of the LCD screen there. And you got the traction control located off to the left. And on the door panel, you have power folding exterior mirrors, your four electric windows, and the steering wheel itself is a three spoke leather wrap, and it has the electric power assisted feedback. And down here, there's actually a control here marked mode, and you can adjust the weight of the steering between normal and sport. Now, most cars usually have three settings, but the Tucson only offers two. And you've got your standard uh, multifunction controls for the radio and Bluetooth and the mute button for the radio on the left. And your truck computer controls uh, operated by this button and this one. And your cruise control off to the right. And also if I just go through the truck computer, you've got a few different screens to navigate through. So you got your uh, little compass there, radio screen. Uh, you also got a few settings here, tells you when your service is due. And a few settings here regarding the door, lights, factory setting, reset and so on. So coming into the center console, you got this very nice eight inch touchscreen unit. So we have the satellite navigation map up at the moment. We'll just go through the controls briefly. So if we start here with radio, we'll actually just crank up the volume to see what the sound quality is like. In the Northwest. If these things are important to you when considering a new smile, then David McCall Okay, so sound quality is pretty good. Certainly not wrong with that. So you've got all your uh, touchscreen controls okay down here. So if I just press radio, I can choose between AM and FM frequencies. Uh, my list of radio stations, we got three pages of them. Good response from the touchscreen actually. Uh, you got your presets, your options, uh, just for going to the radio itself, setting it up how you like. Media, that's things like, you know, uh, auxiliary and USB devices and so on. And then you got the map again. So you got a few controls here. So uh, let's see what happens when I press this one. So this gives you your route, points of interest and traffic information. We click this one here, full screen, route information, media info. So as you can see, it displays the radio up there, or we can just have the full map itself. And the resolution, sorry, is pretty good. Excellent quality. You also got your digital time up there, and you can also slide around the map as well. Very, very responsive touchscreen. Maybe a little too responsive. I'm still trying to get used to it. Uh, can't seem to get back in the center. Close enough. And uh, then you just got your uh, general information located down here, your current position, live points of interest, you can get weather updates, but you have to have um, your mobile phone connected to the car's Wi-Fi system for that. And then you just got a few settings here for the Wi-Fi system, Bluetooth, navigation, sound and display. So the Aeon's touchscreen is very good quality, uh, very nice to use and very simple as you can see just there in that demonstration. And located down here you got your dual zone climate control with your digital readout, your different fan speeds, air conditioning, you can also turn it off from here. And this car also has three stage heated front seats as standard on this executive model. And then located down here, you've got your auxiliary and USB. You also have a 12 volt part left, located off to the left there, your cigarette lighter, and also you got a bit of storage. So I just have my GoPro sitting down there. But this here has actually got a bit of a rubber padding. So hopefully things like my GoPro wouldn't slide around too much. And then down here, as I was showing you earlier, you've got your adjustable steering weights, you have your hill descent, the start-stop system, as well as turning on and off your parking sensors from here as well. And this car also has a six-speed manual transmission. And as you can see in reverse, you have the backup camera and guidance lines. And this car, of course, sticks with the uh, traditional handbrake lever instead of an electronic parking brake. You also got two integrated cup holders, this removable ashtray as you can see there, a leather centimeter armrest with a good bit of deep storage down below as well. So overall the interior is quite a nice place to be. It actually has a manual dimming interior mirror. A lot of cars with this kind of spec you would normally have auto dimming interior mirrors. You also got a sunglasses container up there and you also have this uh, extra piece that slides out to uh, block the sun coming in from this side as well as a lighting. 
So, so far so good with the interior. And the leather perforated seats are very comfortable as well. Very nice to sit in. And the bonnet release is located down the driver's side footwell. The engine is a 1.7 litre turbo diesel. It produces 114 brake horsepower with a top speed of 109 miles per hour. It also produces 207 foot-pounds of torque and it's estimated this car can do about 61 miles to the gallon. Alright, so the Hyundai Tucson, Ireland's best-selling car. Well, I'm interested to see why it's our best-selling car. So I think we're going to break this review down into sections and cover it piece by piece and see what we can find out. So I'm just going to go around this roundabout here and we'll see about the power when I just uh, pull into the dual carriageway. I'm in second gear at the moment. So it'll be interesting to see how this thing performs. Okay, we're just going to straighten up. Okay, foot down. Right. Well, the 1.7 litre diesel is pretty good in the i40. It's pretty good in Kia's range as well. It's very well suited actually to smaller cars. The Tucson is quite a big car and it's got quite a lot of weight, so it feels okay, I think is the best way to put it. Certainly it's the best engine for fuel economy, it's most economical. Uh, as far as power goes, I don't know, it just feels kind of weak, it feels like it doesn't have much pull from it. Now there is a 2 litre turbo diesel which produces about 135 horsepower, which I think would be much better suited to a large car like the Tucson. And there's also a 1.6 petrol which also puts out around 135 uh, horsepower as well. Not really sure if we would sell many 1.6 petrols in Ireland, mainly because it's a small engine, this is a big car and it will probably uh, be rather thirsty. So uh, on the power front, 2 litre diesel would certainly be better for this car, the 1.7 though is okay but not great, that's my, uh, uh, my opinion on it. Uh, another thing that I don't actually like about this thing is, uh, I've never complained about this in a car review before, it's the electric power steering. Um, I have it set to normal mode at the moment, but it doesn't even matter if you set the sport mode, it feels weird. It feels like the steering wheel isn't really connected to the front wheels, it feels vague and kind of, I don't know, it's a weird sensation. Every once in a while I can feel the steering wheel kind of, I don't know, click to one side I suppose, I think that's the best way to describe it. I'm not really a big fan of this electric steering in this particular car. Uh, as I said, it feels vague and uh, if I just move the wheel a bit there, it, just, it doesn't really feel like there's much connection between it and the front wheels. Uh, other things I'm not a fan of in this car is uh, the dashboard and the plastics. You listen to that? Okay, up here as well, up here and down here in the tunnel all hard hollow plastic uh, that's the whole dashboard and the center console down here and the door cards it's not even soft touch look if i just feel it here that is hard plastic so i don't really like that um what else well there's a few things i do like the six speed manual gearbox in this car is very nice a uh, nice notchy gear changes i certainly do like them and the equipment in this particular executive model is very good as well i got automatic xenon headlights bluetooth cruise control a uh, nice satellite navigation system that i like uh, the seats are very comfortable as well and they're also heated as well three stage Okay, so coming out to these back roads and we'll see what the ride quality is like on the uh, rougher terrain. So going around one of these uh, tight bends here, let's see if there's much body roll. It's actually just coming up here in just a moment. I've been over a few rough patches so far and the ride quality seems decent enough. But if we uh, just gear down to third here for this next corner, see how much body roll there is. Okay, so there's a small bit. I can feel a little bit of body roll going around that uh, tight left-hander here. It's getting tighter here again. Yeah, it's not the best, not the worst. It's kind of mediocre. Uh, there, of course, this is a large vehicle, uh, so there is an inevitable amount of body roll, but it's not too bad. Very similar to that of a Toyota RAV4 or a Kia Sportage. And as far as ride quality goes, it's pretty good. The suspension does a very good job at absorbing all the knocks and bumps that you get from the road. And another tight left-hander. Alright, so on these back roads it's not too bad. It handles itself quite well and uh, the suspension does a very good job at absorbing bumps. Okay, so heading back towards town. Well, let's, uh, let's see. Uh, things that I don't like about the uh, 
Tucson. Uh, the 1.7 diesel doesn't feel particularly powerful in this car, so I don't like that. Although, generally speaking, I do like the 1.7 diesel because um, my friend's parents actually recently bought a 2013 i40 and it's 1.7 and I've driven their car a few times and it is excellent. So I do like the 1.7, generally speaking, just not in this particular car. Uh, I don't like the interior plastics and I don't particularly like the electric power steering. Things I do like, I like the equipment that I get in this particular model, which I went through earlier. Uh, I like the ride quality, I like the overall visibility in this car, I can see out through that back window very well because this car is almost kind of completely square in shape, so it's got very rectangular windows, not curvy angular ones that you can't see out of, and it's got very large exterior mirrors. And to drive out right in the main road, it's actually very quiet. Uh, there isn't really that much wind noise. The only significant wind noise I was getting was over these uh, wind deflectors. But overall, I think uh, the Tucson is a very, very nice car. But, and this is the big but, car of the year, or not even, sorry, not car of the year, best selling car in Ireland. It's over 3,300 units sold so far and counting. Could easily be maybe 4,000 Tucson sold in Ireland before this year is out. See, the problem I have is the Kia Sportage. That is this car's identical twin. And I don't understand why the Tucson sells better than that. I mean, maybe it's the styling. The new Sportage probably isn't really a locker front the front, whereas the Tucson looks good everywhere. And then you've got the Nissan Qashqai and the Toyota RAV4. You see, that's the problem I have. All those car, all these cars are very, very similarly equipped. They all cost around the same. I mean, a brand new executive Tucson just like this costs 32 and a half thousand euro, give or take brand new. We're selling this one for about 28 and a half thousand. It's got less than 8,000 kilometers on it. I don't know, I'm really, really struggling to put my finger on why this is Ireland's best selling car amongst all the other crossover SUVs that we get here, and we do get a lot. And we even have the brand new Peugeot uh, 3008 that just came out, which I'm also going to be reviewing. So I don't know, it's a good car. There's a lot to like about Tucson, especially this executive model. There's a few things to dislike about it, but generally speaking, it's a good car. I'm still struggling to find out though why this is our best-selling car. Uh, you probably need to talk to a handy Tucson owner or two to find out what it is that they love about this thing. But it is spacious, it is well equipped, the seats are very comfortable, so lots of pluses there for this car. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this one that review of the 2016 Hyundai Tucson. Please remember to rate, comment and subscribe and I'll see you again in the next video. Thanks for watching everyone.